what in the hell happened between Meg Thee Stallion and Tory Lanez? Now, let's start this conversation off on a positive note. I don't think anybody here condones emotional, physical, sexual abuse. But I feel like it's a conversation that needs to be had. Sam, what do you think? What happened? <laughs> I think, like everybody else, man, I think the problem is we really don't know what happened. I think a situation occurred. I think we all know that a situation occurred. Megan got shot. We don't know who pulled the trigger. And I think coming to social media, coming out about it, talking about it, has even confused us even more. Mm -hmm. I think it's an open case. They should have kind of handled it privately. But I think with people attacking her, making jokes about her, she felt like she had to respond. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what kind of messed the whole thing up. Because mm -hmm. the moment she responded, we got one side. Mm -hmm. And now Tori didn't respond for months. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, well, a lot of people have just said, okay, well, Megan spoke, so she's telling the truth. And I think it's like, maybe she is telling the truth, but because we don't know the other side, because we're not judging the jury, we shouldn't be passing judgment. I think it's like, okay, we do say something happened, like, that's a terrible situation. Mm -hmm. No woman deserves that. Mm -hmm. But it's not my job to say, Tori's done. And also, this is a sensitive time, too, with the loss of Breonna Taylor. Exactly. Um, Gee, that was my with, point with, right the, with, the, with the loss of Breonna Taylor, it is everything is hypersensitive. So any type of abuse, I mean, um, I believe last night uh, there was a post that said like another rapper ended up knocking his uh, baby mama's tooth out or something like that. Was it Sway Lee? Sway Lee, yeah. So like, <laughs> yeah. yeah so like, all of it's true or not. So that's, he, he's saying it's not true. So now we're in a, we're in a very heightened state right now where uh, you have to be careful how you're dealing with women, specifically black women. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the Tory Lanez and Megan Stallion case, the issue is that, like you were saying, Sam, is that if abuse happened, the individual should be held responsible. Okay. The issue, though, is how it was handled from the beginning. Every, both parties have to be responsible for the role that they play in a situation. That goes for Meg and that goes for Tory. So if Meg was injured, whether she was shot, whether some, whether he shot at the ground and the sharpener went into her other foot, whatever it may be, we don't have to get into the semantics for that. We just know that she was involved in a situation where she was abused. She came out on IG Live. Again, we're talking about social media to millions of people to talk about the situation that happened. She came out maybe like, I don't know, maybe it was in between two to four weeks later. Um, she didn't name who shot her during that time. She came out again and then named, I think she ended up naming Tory Lanez and she said she was trying to save him. He, she was saying that people from her to his team was, you know, picking, poking fun at the bullying her on social media or whatever. And she felt like she had to stand up for herself. Now we're dealing with a situation Tory goes dark for what 60 days or more and he's big on IG, he's doing the quarantine IG quarantine, quarantine radio quarantine yeah. radio and all that and all of a sudden it goes dark. Now one 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 statement I made in a group chat of mine is that the reason why one he can't talk about it on social media like she did because he's technically not the victim. He's somebody who's being accused of a crime. So any good lawyer is gonna tell you to not get on social media and talk about this. For one, people didn't even know that he got charged with a felony for having the gun. So whenever the situation happened and they, the police, that video you see Meg kind of like hobbling on her foot, they were in the car with three other individuals. Tory is in the car. I think it was his vehicle and the gun was in there and they charged him for possession of that weapon. Yep. And in California, that's like having a gun in New York. Mm -hmm. You're going to get some time. Mm -hmm. So he's looking at probably getting some time in, in regards to that. But I believe that the deeper discussion is how social media, the cancel culture, how um, people are attacking Tory, how people are attacking Meg. Mike, how do, what do you feel about the situation overall related to the physical abuse that Meg went through and the accusations against Tory? I have no issues with her coming out on social media because her initial response was she didn't name him. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the anger, specifically with black women, is that they have been protecting black men for so long and trying to have our back. At the moment that somebody is traumatized, you know, um, and they try to speak their truth and protect them at the same time, and then she catches a bunch of backlash. I have no problem with her saying her piece. Um, and with Tory Lanez, I understand why he had to be quiet because it's a sensitive situation. And right. If you do say something, obviously, with the legal system, and then he is from Canada, it's going to get pretty messy. Right, and, right. Um, I, I understand he dropped the album, and I didn't listen to it. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to plan on listening to it. Um, but I think he dropped it on the day of the Breonna Taylor, you know, whole mm -hmm. entire indictment and everything. So it's just a really high percent of the time. But I do believe we got to figure out the way to protect our women because I think they fed up in this world. Sure. Speed up, do you believe that his silence was almost an admission of guilt? Absolutely not. I think you said it best in the idea that when you are going through situations like that, you do have to go dark. 
on social media. You can't do interviews or anything like that because you could sabotage your case. But I wanted to double back on the protection of black women. I thought that was a very, very strong point because, you know, even in the video you're talking about, Megan Thee Stallion is sitting there bleeding out of her foot and she doesn't throw Tory Lanez under the bus in that moment. She's still right here in this moment trying to protect Tory Lanez, trying to protect a black man. So I do think that, um, you know, we do need to do a better job of protecting. I mean, because we all have mothers. You know, mm -hmm. some of us have sisters. Some of us have wives. Mm -hmm. So we, we do have um, women that we would like to be protected in our absence. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, we do need to do a better job of protecting our black women the way they have sheltered us. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we get a lot of um, manipulation with just the divisiveness systemically. Um, you know, like you can date it back to as far as slave times if you want. I'm not, you know, we don't need to get that deep. No, let's, let's get that deep. But that's the reality really? of it. You know what I'm saying? Like for years, women had to fend for themselves when uh, marriages and, and, and families were broken apart from 1619 to 1865 to 1930 to even currently when um, black men are still being um, slaves when they're sent off to prison for selling dime bags of weed and, and whatnot. So mm -hmm. families being broken up, women have had to fend for themselves a lot longer. Um, which gives them a, a bit of a, a, um, a, a complex of, you know, I can handle myself. I can I can do it myself. You know what I mean? The independence. That's right. the word I'm looking for. Thank you. The independence. And sometimes that has has this with men. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? That independence. I remember. I remember my wife messes with me a lot of, because I remember when I was in um, high school and I was dating this chick, and she would not let me open her car door. Mm. She would not let me open her car door. She said she's independent. Her mom taught her she was independent. She was raised by a single mother. Her mom taught her mm -hmm. she was independent. She didn't need nobody <clears throat> opening her car door. So sometimes that's not something that I'm, you know, like quick to do for my wife. And she'll be like, she'll mention my ex-girlfriend's name. Like, she scarred you. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. like, and, you know, like we joke about it, but those types of scars have been embedded in us again since 1619 when we brought over here and landed in these United States as slaves, you know what I'm saying, on shackles and, and treated as three-fifths of a human being. So... All of that ties into the breakdown of the family. All of that takes, um, to, that's why when you, when you hear that um, Malcolm X quote of how the one black woman is the most disrespected and how she is the mm -hmm. most underappreciated. And th those are true because of the spectrum that we're in in this country. It's white men, it's white women, it's black men, and then at the bottom is black women. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. we have to do a better job of lifting them up. For sure. For sure. For sure. For sure. Um, I was just going to say to all y'all's point, you know, this, I feel like, is directly tied to what's going on with Breonna Taylor's situation. Like, I feel like, you know, a lot of people are trying to look at them exclusively. Like, they are tied together just based off the climate, being on social media. You know, you see Megan Thee Stallion, you see Tory Lanez, and then you also see, okay, she, these officers are getting charged for bullets that didn't even hit her. You know what right. I mean? And so, it's just all of that being compounded on top of each mm -hmm. other. And then, of course, to your point about black women being disrespected, like, it's, it's evident, you know? Of course, you know, if you see a black woman with her hands up, you know, her, she can't walk. Hey, why are the police, you know, she doesn't have a weapon, clearly. Mm -hmm. Why are the police pointing a gun at her, telling her to back up, you know, mm -hmm. to get on her knees? I'm like, she is a shot. She's shot, you know. Right. Like, yeah. right. She was, that's the point of, like, right. so much vulnerability that, like, Correct. she can't even control the situation. Where's so, like, the compassion from the police? Exactly. Right. Where's the compassion? You know, she was showing compassion in not saying what was going mm -hmm. on to save a black man. You know, right. where's the compassion from... A, the black men, and then also, where's the compassion from the police, you know? This is a problem with the judicial mm -hmm. failure, really, if we right. think about it. You know, why mm -hmm. aren't the police telling us what happened? Mm -hmm. You know, why isn't there a clear transparency on the situation? We should be able to go online with, okay, what happened with the situation? Mm -hmm. And the police have told us. Instead, you know, we're sitting here waiting. We have to go to social media for validation to figure out what's going on. Correct. Now, you know, a lot of people sitting there listening to Tory Lane's album trying to figure out, okay, you know, trying to decipher what's going on and still no one yeah. is. You know, like right now, our biggest source of information is shade room exactly in regards to the situation right <laughs> mm -hmm. so pj what as far as okay so i'm looking at it i was going to say something yeah, real quick, go ahead. right before we lose that i just want to say that when you're a person of color male or female compassion is the second emotion displayed by the police officers mm -hmm. aggression is first mm -hmm. every single time mm -hmm. when you're a person of color male or female aggression is always the first That's form of emotion they show and then they make sure but skin, no. skin is a weapon. Absolutely. Like, sure. Sure. Yeah. And it has been since 1619. Yeah, that, that's a psychological thing. I, I believe that's deep rooted into genetics. Mm -hmm. um, you can pass down trauma through genetics. Agreed. Yeah. And, 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 and a lot of officers, specifically white officers, um, and then other officers that, that condone their behavior, uh, have this fear whenever they see a black person. They have a, it's kind of like, um, 
you walking down the street and you see a guy, it's dark and you see a guy with a hoodie on, you automatically have an emotional response. It's the same thing whenever they see a black person riding in a car or they see a black person involved in a situation or whatever it may be. They have a, a strike of fear and they feel like they should approach that because they're a man with a gun and you don't have one. Um, now, be clear, when I pull up to a grocery store and I see a bunch of cats in hoodies, I dad yeah, make sure I get the lock on yeah. my car, too. Yeah, 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 that's not being yeah, like, yeah, that's 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 And PJ, what I was going to ask uh, specifically is, with so much stuff that's going on with black men and policing, right? Charges, overcharged, doing time, like you said, for dime bags, uh, being killed, George Floyd and Mont Arbery, all these individuals, why haven't they charged Tory Lanez in with this crime, suspected crime? Why do you feel that? It's a few things like do we even know if he's in the US right now like so can they get to him um, mm -hmm. Also, he has been in hiding and it takes a while sometimes to take things to trial So people can be out here or maybe he's went in and came back out, you know But like another thing just like the Breonna Taylor case should he be charged? You know what I'm saying? He's saying oh it didn't happen this way on other accords when he's talking to TI like it didn't happen the way Everybody's hearing it, but mm -hmm. my thing is nah, you wrong Tori you shot at her mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You shot at a black woman. You shot at a woman. Let this sure. have been a white woman. He would have been done for it. Let that have been Kylie in the building or in the that car night. or all around. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't have to have a gun. He got security. You mm -hmm. know, like, we do got to protect our, our black women, you know? And it's like, she almost put a superwoman cape on just to cover up for him. That's how, like, systematic this is. Like, you know, we're that oppressed that... Or even our women are forgetting, you know, they're and, and we also have a role of like time. no snitching too. No snitching, yeah, right? you know, but then it's like just to protect us, like to where we have to protect each other because mm -hmm. it's a lot of that not happening. Mm -hmm. So I want to add to that point too because I don't even think it would even be a discussion if Kylie Jenner would have won. Oh, absolutely. Shot. No, he no, might have right. been shot that night. Right. That's, that's, what, that's what I'm saying. saying. For real. It's the fact that real. people are even commenting <laughs> on it saying, you know, all the different types of statements or whatever they may believe. But if Kylie Jenner would have been shot that night, there would have been no question what would have happened. Mm -hmm. yeah, and sure. Megan Thee Stallion for the culture has been a, a powerful figure for young girls. Yeah. You know, women all across as far as being independent, being a boss, owning who you are. And, and just to see her have to go through this psychological trauma. I haven't even seen the video of her bleeding out with the police and stuff. So that's crazy. That's to, me. crazy. Yeah. But to your point, bro, my experiences, I think it just goes back to experiences with black people with police officers. Like, as crazy as it may sound, every time I've been stopped by a white police officer, I've received a citation or a ticket. And every time I've been stopped by a black police officer, I've never received anything. So like, I mean, I hate to say that it's based on race, yeah. but like, oh, we, man, know, we know how it goes. We know well, how it goes. Course, they used to be slave catchers. And one yeah. time, you know, it, again, it's about who they are and who's showing compassion. They know as a black police officer, okay, if he gets stopped by a white police officer, he most likely is getting a citation or ticket. Mm -hmm. Like, he don't know how the situation is going to go. So, okay, I as a black police officer, I got to show my own people compassion. Like, and that's what it goes back to. We got to have more black police officers. You know, mm -hmm. we got to have more black people in positions of power and control. Of that all home. starts in these neighborhoods. What do we grow up telling our kids? F-12. Exactly. F-12. Yeah. Yeah. Our kids grow up not even wanting to be police officers. Yeah, that's right. not even on their to-do list. Right. right? Because everybody around them is saying, you don't want to be like them. They're very when the reality mm -hmm. is just what you're saying. Mm -hmm. We need to have more people of our skin tone mm -hmm. in these offices so that they can come in our neighborhoods and know that just because he got a hoodie on, but ain't a threat. He just got a hoodie on. Yeah. It's, just, it's just like the black uh, Klansman. He had you have to you have to sometimes make a deal with the devil. Sometimes you have to go into the trenches. Sometimes you have to pull up a seat at a table. Right? You got you you to pull up. You got to pull up a seat at the table in order to be able to make changes at the table. It's hard to make changes on the outside looking in. That's what we're doing now. We're trying to make changes on the outside looking in, but we need somebody who's on the police force that's that's making these changes. Like I have an uncle that's a sheriff of the city where I'm from. He's been all over CNN, MSNBC, speaking out against police officers. Wrote a book talking about how do you how how to stop for a cop. You know, educating black mm -hmm. people and people of color on how to uh, interact with police. So, you know, I think the biggest thing, sometimes you gotta dig up the tree. Yeah. You know, and, and, and specifically, yeah. what I was gonna ask is, um, what should happen from here with Tory Lanez, right? Because what's happening is, we are, we have become the jury based on social media, mm -hmm. right? There's no charges against him for shooting Meg Stout. So we, we, have to, we have to be able to debate facts, not should happen, what could have happened. We weren't there, we don't know what happened. Evidently, there were some people there on the scene. Evidently, there were no witnesses to the crime. It's messy, right? Mm -hmm. So us playing the role of being the jury, which everybody is doing, when it, even if you're doing it intellectually, you comment on posts on social media, or you're having conversations with your friends, what should happen to Tory Lanez from I think, this point on? I think Tory Lanez should be canceled. 
You know what I'm saying? I was a big Tory Lanez. Do you think he should be charged? Yes. Okay. I, I was a big fan of him. Me like, too. You know what I'm saying? I listened yeah. to his music, everything. Yeah. But like, I feel like it was a sucker move shooting at a lady. I feel like he's guilty again. Well, shooting at anybody, you know what I'm saying? We want to put, put guns yeah, down. Yeah, <laughs> but, right, yeah, right, right. But, but after that, you know, you release on the day of Breonna Taylor's like, you know what I'm saying, when it comes out, and like, why are you putting the album out anyway? That was like very sucking to me. So now it seems like, okay, you telling your story, your album, like, get out of here, dog. Mm-hmm. Like, we know how this works as artists. Like, you trying to get record sales, negativity sales. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? If you got like got word of mouth around you and you were the most talked about person right now, this situation is gonna sell. Mm-hmm. So man, get the and he, he's saying his response to dro- <laughs> his response to dropping the album. Out uh, on that day was that it was the anniversary of his mom's birthday and his mom's death. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the purpose of it. His team is saying the reason why he dropped it on that day. That's damn okay. interesting. But, yeah. but but I don't I don't I don't I don't, why even drop an album on the yeah, day of my birthday? Why, why even drop an album? Anyways, before now I'm related to Meg Stallion. That's just a bad decision. Yeah. Yeah. Here, exactly. you know, you know, I mean, that black woman in the other way, but I do want to say this um, because. I do believe he should be charged. He shouldn't have a gun in the city, you know, because we know about violence towards black women. Mm-hmm. But I just need people before they make their judgments and opinions to have that same energy as if it was your own woman well, inside your family being shot. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Right. Because I feel like people are quick to say whatever, but I have three sisters, a mom, I have three nieces. Somebody pull a gun on my family members, yeah. we have issues. But in this situation, it's funny how we just, I don't know. Well, let, 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 me flip yeah. it, let me flip it on you though. How would you feel if, if there was a Tory Lanez type person that was your brother or your best friend? I was just He's wrong too. Yeah, but, but, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But, you, but but we got cousins mm-hmm. that do stuff. Yeah. Now, that have done worse stuff than that. Yeah. Right? So but we didn't we didn't put them on the cross and crucify them. Yeah. We're like, uh, maybe they made this mistake, uh, maybe they did this, but since it's Meg the Stallion who's like basically Beyonce of female rap, right? We we're saying, okay, this should happen to Tory, but if that's your brother, would you say that if that was your biological brother, he should be charged in this crime? If he shot mm-hmm. anybody, period. Mm-hmm. You turn him in. You turn him in. He gotta go. I ain't turning my brother in. Hell no, me neither. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, it sounds bad, but I'm not doing it. You gonna have a brother to brother brother with your brother though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No question. No question. We gonna sit down and man to man. We gonna air it out. But am I gonna throw? Because I know what happens on the other side of that system. Yeah, yeah. Right? right. So from that perspective, and I think that's what Meg was thinking too. Absolutely. So why she didn't want? She didn't want to put him in the system because she knows what's gonna happen. He it's going to be under the book. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. And that yeah. breaks down to another point, you know. The jail system is so terrible. Why are we treating people who go to jail like we do? Like, we mm-hmm. should be rehabilitating them to bring them back into society mm-hmm. and be able to work. That know? ain't what jail is for. It's not. Jail is for slavery. Exactly. Right? Yeah. It is. That's all it is. And now with it being so privatized, like, one of the things that I'm actually working on at UNC mm-hmm. is removing the food vendor that provides food to all the sporting events and, like, to our dining halls because they support privatized prisons oh, and they wow. provide food to them at, you wow. know, they do discounts and they have such long contracts that you know it prioritizes them serving dirt pretty much to mm-hmm. them. And then they'll have snacks at commissary mm-hmm. that you know if you it's have, like, yeah. you know we know people who don't got no family. Mm-hmm. You know, they ain't buying nothing in jail. All they getting is them three hots and that cop. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's, until that changes, like the whole system, it's, it's so many yeah. different factors. One last question. Oh, it's, I mean, I mean, Go ahead, it's hard to tell Tory Lane to throw his life away. It's hard to tell him to come out and say, "I shot her." charge me mm-hmm. i think an actionable item especially for black women is stop hiding the abuse like i watched pussy p valley <laughs> i watched p valley <laughs> i watched p valley and in that last scene in the season finale you see her take up for her abuser yeah right and it was a white guy in this case but i think that's the case for a lot of these situations that was a of scene. abuse that was, that was yeah because you think you're like okay like it's done but you know down in there looking up for yeah. the whole time and, and, and she takes up for him, the abuser. I think that's the, that's the situation with Megan Tory. It's like she protected an abuser. And in this situation, even though it's your first instinct to think, all right, I'm going to protect a black man, in this instinct, you can't. Because right. that opens up a door for somebody else to do it. And then we have situations like this where we don't know who to believe now. It's right. even messed up in a sense, too. Like, look, look now. Now, all right, we got it in our hands as a community, and we still not protecting the black woman. Like, the majority is like, ah, I ain't trying to listen to it. It's like, nah, we need to come together as a whole. If somebody's wrong, they're wrong. They're and that's wrong. how we want them to police the system, too. Exactly. Wrong. Any color, you wrong, you wrong. But also, too, like, one thing my mom always says is, like, what happens in this house stays in this house. Yeah. You made a com- you made a comment in regards to, if that's your brother, you're going to have a heart-to-heart with your brother. Rick Ross posted something on IG, and so, so Shade Rowan's eating that up, too. 
like what approaches do you think of a public figure like Rick Ross, who's considered like a big homie, an OG, a boss, he has his godfather like aura to himself in rap music. What approach do you think he could have taken that may have been a lot better towards territory lanes to maybe come up with some conflict resolution in this case? Well, first, ducking behind those two barrel air balls was not a good <laughs> nah, that was not a good move. Tagging your sponsorship. So bamboo and rum. All all that, that's that was corny. corny. And that you corny. gave Tory Lanez ammunition. Because what did he yeah. come back and say? He points that out. And I'm like, damn, that's a very good point. Tory, him, right? But you're not marching in your own city. Right. Exactly. Right. So <laughs> Rick Ross, I think, one, he could have gave that man a phone call. Yeah. I don't mind him putting it on social media. Again, everything is on social media. So I don't mind him. But show us you pulling up on Tory. You at Tory Crib, y'all. I just talked to the little homie. We da 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 That type vibe. I told like, him that he was wrong. Yeah, but like right. you trying to promote your brand while tell somebody they just made a bad move. It's a bad move. Yeah, and right. the irony in that because you because you're, you're saying that he's wrong for promoting his brand for dropping the album on the you a hypocrite. You're doing the exact same, same thing. Both of you are being opportunists. Right. He's being opportunists. Y'all want to hear my side of the story? Go buy the album. Right. You tell. Oh, y'all need somebody to check Tory Lanez? I'm gonna got you behind these bottles of rosé. Like, no, 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 no. That's, that's why people gotta take my bottle. No, you're fine. I, I, that's why I think people gotta take uh, notes from Jay Z how Nipsey Hussle handled business. Yeah, exactly. mm -hmm. they were so smooth so and quiet. Stay right? low, behind the scenes. Stay low. Give that man a call right. or pull up on him. Like usually the usually Rick Ross does does well in these situations yeah, where he he, he kind of got low. Bro, but with yeah. this one, I think he was right in what he did because that is what I mean. Me personally, I do feel like the bosses and OGs need to be checking Tory. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Because Tory was hot. Well, so yeah, like, yeah, yeah, take yeah, a rough yeah. nation. He was rough nation too, right? Yeah. With uh, for his marketing, I'm not sure. Tory, I think he was. I think he was uh, on marketing. Mm -hmm. He was doing numbers, but yeah, sure. He's, he's independent now. He's, he is independent. He got a bunch of YouTube deals, everything, uh -huh. Instagram King. But like Dot was saying, you know what I'm saying? Don't, it ain't the time. If you're going to bring anything, just keep it raw. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Don't advertise because that was that lame shit that Tory did. Mm -hmm. But like, <laughs> it was the same as yeah. thing, though. So, I mean, I think the consensus, man, is that we understand. I think one thing we all agree on is that abuse towards women, abuse towards black women can be tolerated and no, no matter what. Um, Sam spoke on the responsibility of the woman. It's not always, even if it's abuse against a man or a man abusing a woman, the, a person being abused has to also take responsibility and speaking up and advocating for themselves, right? If you're not, if you're scared to do that, confide to your friends, call the police, call your family, do whatever you have to do to make sure that you're protecting yourself and keeping yourself out of harm's way. You know, I'm always tell like homegirls and, and my sister, like, don't put yourself in a bad situation. Why are you hanging out with people who got guns? You open up your you open up the door to be abused, right? So you have to play chess and not checkers and make sure that you're responsible for that, right? And go ahead, BJ. I got a question. And I think we all. <laughs> all right. Should we ever call the police? Like on our own? Should you call the police? Like what are we supposed to do? You know, like because they're like you know defund the police. Okay, cool. We want to do that. Like what if they were gone? Like what do we do in situations? Do we know? You know what I'm saying? Do you just like? Pull up on cats, you know what I'm saying? Do you grab the homies or do you just big bro them? Which I my, 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 my response to that is like, let's say for instance, Meg calls the police and names Tory Lanez. Would, we, would there be a different situation if Tory Lanez was killed by police after Meg called him? Yes, it would. Oh, yeah. It would be a different conversation. That's why I said, what, what do we so do? Like, it would it, be, it, be unfortunate, but I think the, it, the focus would not be that Tory Lanez Abuser. The focus would be that there's another black man killed by police. Well, if he shot at her, though, I, I don't. I think. I, I think that would be overshadowed media. based on social media. If she, social she, media would overshadow that because it would have been she. She calls his death by calling, and she would then be yeah. the victim again, yeah, which is yeah. another example okay. of black women. Yeah. They can't yeah. do. They can't do right from wrong. Damn. Right. But that's. But that's almost why she spoke out because they were saying so much stuff about her. She was she like, "Hold on, now, like this is not funny." You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like this is what happened. But I think in that situation. That was the moment. If you're going to speak, say what happened. Because you're not protecting the situation anymore once you speak. When she went live? Yeah, once she went live. So you're not. So she should have went yeah, live. She, she, I'm okay with her going live, but if you're going live to speak on a situation, then speak on the situation. Right, because, because, because she, didn't, she didn't name him. Yeah, day. because in that situation, you have to name him. Because There was a lot of speculation. Like They started thinking, like, oh, it was Tory. Maybe it's Tory. Yeah, yeah. And so I, I, think, I think we have to drop the no snitching culture. If you're not a thug in any streets... And you ain't ghosts on power. <laughs> those 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 laws don't apply to you. Yeah, you as any you as any street dude, they would tell you that those laws and that policy and procedures applies to people in the streets. Right. Somebody bring Meg not in the streets. Time. Meg not in the streets. No. So her responsibility as a person, whenever she got whenever they got arrested that night 
and she went to see the um, Mount Sinai to the hospital, she should have named who her abuser was. Mm -hmm. But she may not be in the streets, but her environment, how she grew up and who she grew up with. Well, she flopped with. That's what I'm thinking too right. as well. Like, Which is why Bun B and them came out and said that mm -hmm. that's that no snitching don't apply to you. Mm -hmm. That right? mentality so, is what we all adopted as a yeah. black yeah. Man. So, so, you know, I think even after this conversation, man, I'm still confused. I think the consensus is that I just think, with, no, I think uh, Tori is wrong. I'm not no. saying when I say I'm confused, I'm more so confused about we understand what the problem is. We can talk about the problem all day long. We can talk about what was wrong. I still don't have a solution okay. for how we can fix it. And that you know is the most offensive problem. I think, I, think, I, I think it comes down to the protection of the abuser. I think we got to make it safer for people to do that. Right, you know, stop normalizing. Yeah, stop normalizing yeah, yeah. being yeah, quiet exactly. and because that's part of the bigger problem. So because I grew up, I, I have two cousins at our house, so it's, it's I have a different relationship with the police force than the average person who might have been abused by police Me too. and constantly harassed. So Me it's too. like I don't have that reserve of mm -hmm. if something's wrong, calling the cops. Now mm -hmm. I do think about it if I were like in a situation with a brother or somebody black, but that's that's what they're there for. Yeah, same same for you know me, man. Like me and my uncle have a like a phenomenal relationship, father son relationship. I love them. You know what I'm saying? I, that's one of my best friends. I confide in him. He's a confidant. So it's difficult for me to, I have a perception of the police and I believe, I believe that policing is wrong as hell. And I tell him this and I express myself and he agrees. But as far as, it's difficult for me to look at him the same way I look at other individuals. Mm -hmm. And I'm proud of him specifically for always speaking up. He spoke at George Floyd's funeral, you know, and talking about what's going on with policing and how they are the problem and how they have to fix themselves internally in order to for that to pour out into the streets whenever they're interacting with black people, right? Um, and so I think, you know, the consensus, man, is that Tory wrong as hell. He plays some, <laughs> he plays some role. He wrong. That he shouldn't have played. And I think as black people, we have to stop getting into the semantics of what's, if she got shot in the foot, well, she, 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 she should have had a post yeah, yeah. She was wrong. He was wrong. And, he was wrong. and he was wrong. I hope and pray that Megan gets the, the psychological help. Mm -hmm. that she may need to process that. We don't know their relationship between her and Tori if it was romantic. So it was. Get, no, it so was. get shot by your lover. It was. Yeah. <laughs> it was. He, 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 can, he, he confessed that in the album, how they secretly were in a relationship that day. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> sure. but, I mean, you know, I think everybody, I know this is a very, very sensitive topic, so thank you for speaking up on it. Um, I think us as black men have to first fix stuff at home. So okay. as we put that energy into Tori and Meg, Make sure you're doing that with your cousins who are in a abusive relationship, mm -hmm. with that hood dude for all those years, I don't even or know or your or your siblings, or your your kids getting bullied at school. You can't have all this energy for people you don't know because they're celebrities, but you're not speaking up against the abusers in your family. Whether you got cousins that are abusers or cousins or siblings that have been abused, we have to make sure that we're doing this on the forefront at home so that it pours out into the streets, and then we'll be able to speak on things related to Tory May. But we all have somebody that we know has been abused and we did not speak up. So we, we, we gotta make sure we're doing our part with that.